C, which is D2, and you probably want a D3. Um, outside of most that... Most supplements are D3. Yeah, so the only supplement you can buy over the counter is a D3 supplement. Right. So paradoxically, D2 is a prescription-based supplement. Um, so a couple years back, I saw a lot of people going into their physician. They would get a test, and they're like, they would do a 25-hydroxy test, and then they'd send them to their uh, pharmacist for a prescription. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. What prescription did you get? And it's a D2. The issue with that is unless you've got kidney issues, other things going on. D2 is a very, very, very short half-life. D3 is a much longer half-life. So you could literally get a D2 supplement. They could go back and retest you, and you're fine, and then like two, three weeks later, you're low again. So unless you've got kidney issues or something else going on, I always ask them is, did they give you a prescription for the supplement, or did they tell you to buy something over the counter? Right. Um, so D3, what level do you want to be in D3? Yeah, 50 to 70, probably somewhere in there. If you get too high, there's some data to show that you can increase your risk of mortality, things like that. Um, if you're definitely on the lower end, recovery can be a little bit harder. It can affect performance, things of that nature. I, I almost can't go in the sun at all with anyone in this space without somebody being like, get some vitamin D in me. Like, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. It's like such like a mainstream thing now. Everyone knows about it. But like, what, what really is the difference in your mind between supplementing with D3 and going out and getting like actual exposure to sunlight? Yeah, the, the short answer I would say is we probably don't know know yet. So one of the things I have changed is if they have a test and they say I'm low in vitamin D, like probably two or three years ago I'd be like, perfect, go take this D3 supplement. Now I'm like, okay, well, what do you do? Because in my head I'm thinking, well, why are you low in D3? And I know the answer is they're probably never outside. So I think the bigger issue is that they're probably not outside. So I'll ask them, how often are you outside? Uh, eh, I walk between my car, I go to my desk, I walk to the gym, and then I walk home. I'm like, okay, so you're basically never really outside that long. I'm like, yeah. well, no. So is D3 being low an issue? Yep. But there's also other benefits to being outside. There's some cool studies in uh, Japan uh, called forest bathing. Which when I first heard the term, I thought was like a bunch of hippies running around the woods, like beating themselves with twigs or something. But it's actually just go out and hang out in the forest. And they show uh, autonomic changes. So heart rate variability gets better. Just by looking, the theory is that seeing the fractal patterns of the trees and stuff like that. Um, so I'll ask them how often they're outside. Uh, some other stuff I got from a friend, Dan Party, is if they're outside in the morning without sunglasses, the photons hitting the back of their eye is one of a massive thing to kind of help kind of anchor their circadian rhythm and a lot of times I see if their d3 is low they're not outside much a lot of the time they have a really hard time sleeping they're like I just feel tired during the day and then I try to go to bed and I can't sleep so usually their circadian rhythm is kind of all wonky too yeah it's like 10 degrees or something right the sun's at below 10 degrees like you have the ability to then absorb it uh, as over that you can't it's like um, just too much information in a sense a little bit there's the photons will still hit the back your eyes so I tell people go for a walk in the morning uh, don't use sunglasses it's enough to kind of reset the photoreceptors uh, you are correct though for vitamin D there has to be enough intensity of the sunlight and UV for your skin to basically convert it to vitamin D so I'm from Minnesota so in January if I ran around buck naked all winter <laughs> I'm probably not gonna get enough UV exposure to do anything for vitamin D um, other times of the year I can though so yeah the angle of the Sun for vitamin D does make a difference so what is the is the recommendation to supplement? I actually have clients that live in Alaska. Yeah. And I yeah. Have, I've, this is the first year I've ever met anyone from Alaska, and then all of a sudden I have three clients up there, and literally walking through the winter with them was one of the strangest things. Oh, it's bizarre you, if you've you ever been to there. Them and you can literally feel like a dip in their energy, their training. Everything is just like way more depressed. Oh, yeah. And then... I had never experienced someone that would, was really excited for 35 degrees so they could go yeah. <laughs> panning. They would like bathing yeah. suit weather was 35 degrees because they had been in minus 50 for so long. And just the ability <laughs> to feel the sun just changes everything. So us in SoCal, when it's 60 degrees, we're frozen. We're, yeah. we're pathetically <laughs> upset. That's like, sweater weather. Ah, it's miserable. We don't know what to do with ourselves. They're outside sunbathing, and it's 35 <laughs> degrees. Milwaukee. So, 
Yeah, same Minnesota. Yeah, Milwaukee, yeah. Same, same thing. Way. It was like 30 degrees. Everybody's out in shorts. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so is, is supplementing a is, – is that going to get people to where they need to be? Is that enough? Yeah, I, I still would recommend that they use a supplement to get into the range. Um, but I won't bypass the other discussion. So three years ago, I'd just say, yeah, just take a supplement. Don't worry about it. Now I'll figure out more lifestyle stuff of what's going on. And at the end of the day, I probably still will give them a supplement because yeah. I do want them to get back to that normal range. Um, but I want them to kind of import some of the other health and lifestyle factors too. Um, so I've been in Alaska. My uncle lives up there. And it's so bizarre. We were there in May a couple of years ago. And it was still <clears throat> 1130 at night. And the sun was still in the horizon. Uh, Finland's the same way if you've ever been there. I have not. Uh, nice. Finland actually has a super massive uh, suicide and depression rate too. One of the theories is because of the way the sun and everything is. Yeah. And especially being here at Paleo FX, I'm like, well, wait a minute, what did people do back in the day before vitamin D supplements? Like they didn't have a vitamin D supplement. They lived in these cold areas. Um, there's a bunch of things they would do, but one of them was they would uh, gather mushrooms and they would put them out in the sun and then they would store them for the winter and it turns out that that's a way of creating d2 so they would do that and that would be one of their sources in the in the winter also it's like light uv activated right it is yeah uh, you get a uv UV reaction to it yeah you see some of these mushroom companies uh saying like uh uv you know uv activated like right on the label and you're like yep what is that yeah it's for d2 and d2 can work as in a pinch hit as long as you have it at a pretty high frequency and then also you can store pretty high amounts of d3 so you can get by for a fair amount of times i tell clients that if you're going to get tested get tested if you're in like Minnesota or Alaska sometime probably towards the end of your summer because if you were ever at a max level that's going to be your max and then right as you get done with winter because if you're ever going to be at a low level that's probably where you're going to be and if you're pretty good in those ends you're probably okay and don't be an idiot like I was and take a D3 supplement and then go on a couple trips in the middle of winter and then take the same supplement you did the year before without the trips because I got tested in spring last year and I was like 95. And I'm like, holy crap, that's high. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't take any more of the same supplement than I did the year before. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I took three trips in the winter to where it was nice and warm for a week at a time and just kept taking the same supplement. Yeah. So. Got it.